I fucking hate tutorials. And this one is terrible. Ubisoft knew that Rex Power Cult wasn't alone on this. Whenever you look on message boards or comment sections, most gamers don't care much for explicit instruction. But at the same time, games aren't unified in the same way that movies or novels are. A play button on a remote control is the same whether you're watching Seinfeld or Schindler's List. When you're playing a game, the right trigger on a controller may have your character hit the gas, fire a gun, sprint across rooftops, or cast fire spells from their hands. And when you're not experienced with multiple genres or video games in general, you're not going to be able to enjoy what the experience has to offer if you don't understand how it works. Tutorials are how the games industry has solved this problem. If a game can simply teach someone how a specific set of rules work, then anybody should be able to play it. But far too often, this is not the case, and it's because tutorials are sort of like laundry, dishes, or taxes. They must be done, but aren't very enjoyable, leading to many of us sleepwalking through the steps until the job is done. Understandably, this feeling of boredom is magnified by the player whenever they're asked, or in some cases, forced into a tutorial sequence, giving you a lecture instead of letting you experience the product. So let's cover some good and bad examples. From there, we'll be able to see what a developer should and should not do, and what makes these things important. After all, they have to be. It's hard to find a game these days without a tutorial of some kind, be it written or shown. <laughs> oh, Sid Meier, you've been making games long before I was born, and you're still heading a company that makes quality products. Well, for the most part. Yet even in games of yours that I love, I will forever remember your name because of this. Hi, my name is Sid. Welcome to Civilization IV. Let's look at the 10 different components of growth and production. Treasury, building list, resource, culture bar, production, production, special tile map, city go, click enter to exit the city screen. Fuck you! This is really a problem with strategy games in general. It's especially hard to make a tutorial for this genre, whether it's real time or turn based. Strategy games are very system driven, and the appeal of them is what you can create with those systems. The process of maintaining a base or building stuff isn't isolated. What makes these enjoyable is what they result in, which can be giant death robots, epic battles, or the crushing defeat of your opponent. But when a tutorial is stopping you with every step, all it does is prevent you from seeing and creating what those systems are made for. Another problem with taking this approach to tutorial is that the player has no agency. Reading this text or listening to this guy go on about each individual step makes novice players feel hopeless. <laughs> Fast-paced games aren't allergic to this style of instruction though, as long as there's nothing to slow it down. Injustice Gods Among Us doesn't ask much from neither the player's time or skill. All the player needs to perform is something basic, which can be understood very quickly. More importantly, this tutorial isn't taking control away from the player or showing them an example of how to do it right. It just gives you an unrestrictive button prompt and waits for you to hit them in the correct order. This game also teaches through real player interaction, which is going to stick with the participant far more effectively than if they read an instruction. Because this is what you have to do with BlazBlue Continuum Shift. Not only does the game have unique button icons, but the player doesn't even spend half the time playing these early tutorials. Instead, they're subjected to walls and walls of text, along with a narration, which may be a little overkill. Respawn Entertainment and their previous company, Infinity Ward, have known how to craft tutorials in their games that take up a minimum amount of time to complete, even for first-time players. This also makes them a breeze to go through if you've played games with similar controls. In some ways, they're even fun to go through for experienced players. It's satisfying in Titanfall that you can get to the end of a stage before the instructor has even finished talking. It gives players agency and accomplishment despite not being all that challenging in reality. They can even be used for character and world building, such as with the Russians in Call of Duty 2. These are potatoes, Comrade Commissar. Why are we using potatoes instead of real grenades? Because real grenades are valuable. In fact, they are worth a lot more than you are. However, this can backfire if your game's tutorial feels a little too constructed or forced into the game's world. These types of tutorials are also predictable and therefore boring for experienced players to go through. And because it's part of the story, they can't skip it. Experienced players know how to jump, crouch, and use button prompts. And new players will have an easier time immersing themselves in a world if the game didn't throw them into an action sequence that features their character bumping into walls and spinning in circles. 
best way to cure this is to put the player into a story while they still have plenty of time to learn the basics, instead of being thrown into an action scene. The best kind of tutorial is one that doesn't identify itself as one. Every time I play Fallout 3, I go through the introduction simply because I see it as part of the story and world, and most of the ways the game teaches its systems and mechanics don't feel all that contrived. They all have a thematic connection to your character in the world. You're learning what kind of person you want to be as you're still a child. You're dealing with more problems as you get older. And when you are an adult, you're left to your own devices in a harsh and brutal reality. Bad tutorials are not game-breaking. Nearly all of these negative examples I've used are in games that I enjoy, but that's because I did have some help. Civilization 4 and Continuum Shift were games that I tried because of a group of friends I've played games with for years. Any frustrations I had while learning how to play were mitigated by familiar people and a light-hearted environment. But what if I didn't have that luxury? I can't say for sure that I would be playing Civilization today if I didn't have that personal experience with the game. Had I played it on my own, I probably would have been given a bad first impression from the tutorial and wouldn't feel very encouraged to keep on playing. The worst thing a tutorial can do is make a game feel more complicated than it actually is. It discourages players and doesn't let them see what the game can really do. Tutorials are important, and if you make one correctly, your game really will be accessible to anyone. And isn't that what the industry of today wants?